Uh, how do you play it right now? What does it look like for the midterms? Well, it looks like Democrats win the Senate by one or two seats rather than having this 50-50 tie. The Republicans pick up, I think, the numbers between 15 and 20, which gives them a small but clear majority in the House. But, David, I want to address something that's more significant. And I ask permission from your producers. In the polling and focus groups that we are doing, we see an unprecedented level of distrust, of a loss of credibility for our election system. And this ties directly into our belief and our faith in democracy. I saw this in the run-up to the 2020 election. I raised it about five or six days before that how people count the votes will, will mislead the public into thinking that Trump had won, when in fact, when all the votes are counted, it'll be clear beyond any shadow of any doubt that Joe Biden was the president. But because I launched this too late, people didn't pay attention. So, David, I am afraid that we will have a dozen elections, statewide elections across the country, in major states that will be decided by less than 1 percent. And we're going to have candidates denying the results, not accepting them. And I don't think this country can live through that. To go through another two years of election denial is so dangerous for the democracy. And in the polling that we're doing, the number two issue, after inflation and costs and the economy and affordability, the number two issue is the government itself that is polarized, that is divided beyond repair, that we're not getting anything done. You add this component to that fear, to that annoyance, that anger that's out there. So over 70 percent of Americans are mad as hell, and we have a crisis on our hands. Uh, so, Frank, uh, to, to just underscore your point a bit, in, in 2020, there was a contended presidential election. But I don't remember candidates who actually ran on a platform of we don't believe the electoral system works. This time, in a lot of state offices, governor as well as attorney general, we have quite a few candidates like that. And the secretary of state of Georgia, I'm hoping that he will take the lead because he was willing to stand up to the former president and say enough is enough. You lost the election. Accept your loss. But there are secretaries of state that are running across the country that may not do that. There are governors who may be elected, who may allow this to go on, not for day after day, but week after week or month after month. And we're now less than four weeks away from the election. It's not just Republicans, but we have to do something now to, to ensure accountability, personal responsibility, yeah. Yeah. and most importantly, transparency of the electoral process. Frank, you just made a very important point. You said not just Republicans. Is this a bipartisan issue from your focus groups, from the work you're doing? Do you see that come up with Democrats as often as Republicans? No, it does not. Uh, Republicans are much less trusting of the system, are much more likely to believe that the system is not only broken, but Democrats launched the campaign that there is voter suppression. And when you can vote for two or three weeks in states all across the country, it's not true. And Republicans talk about voter corruption. And, yeah, they can find dozens of votes nationwide, dozens, and they claim that that is systemic. Both sides are playing into this undermining of the faith and trust in the system. And both sides need to cut it out right now yeah. or you're not going to like the, yeah. the consequences of it. I want to make a big shift here, if we could, for a moment to the United Kingdom, because I know you've spent a lot of time over there. Obviously, there's a big drama playing out. You talk about lack of faith in the government. I think that there's a lot of people in Britain right now have lost faith in the government. Can the Liz Trust government survive? Well, I'm asked to describe it, and I give them two words to describe what's going on in Britain, Monty Python. It looks like a television sketch from the 1970s, and in fact, it's all too real. The public has lost faith in the British de uh, de uh, democracy as well. And you can't keep going from chancellor to chancellor to chancellor. What viewers may not realize is that they keep having this turnover of personnel and this rejection of policy day after day, week after week. And the British people are saying, enough already. I don't see how the conservative government survives. I think it shows instability at a time when we need predictability and consistency. And I think it shows a disdain for the public. Listen, learn, and lead, and stop doing U-turns. What can we learn in the United States from what we're seeing in the United Kingdom right now? We need accountability. We need a detailed plan of action. Don't tell us what you might do. Tell us day by day, month by month, exactly what you will do. 
tell us how to hold you accountable, and let the public in on what's going on. Neither country is particularly transparent, and neither country is taking the crisis seriously. And one more point, we have to work together. Democrats and Republicans, conservative, labor, lib, lib Dems, you can't just have a one-party government. It doesn't work. We, we got our threats from Russia, from Iran, and from China. We need to get our act together here, or they're going to be successful over there.